It's the biggest expedition to the Central Arctic in history. Eight years of planning and more than 140 billion euros went into Mosaic. 600 participants from over 60 nations are to explore the current situation in the Arctic for an entire year. But why is an expedition like this even necessary? The Arctic is the fastest warming region on Earth. The average temperature in some parts has already increased by 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. Since the 1980s, the Arctic sea ice cover has been reduced from 7 billion square kilometers to 3.7 square kilometers in summer. That's 20 times the size of Germany in 1980 compared to just 10 Germanys today. The reason for this change lie in the different physical properties of snow, ice and water. Lighter surfaces reflect more sunlight than darker surfaces. This is called the albedo effect. Ice and snow are very light and reflect the majority of solar radiation. As the planet heats up, the ice melts, uncovering the ocean beneath. The dark surface of the ocean collects even more solar energy, which causes the planet to warm up even faster. All these processes are related, which is why the decline of Arctic sea ice will have an enormous effect on entire ecosystems and also change the climate at our latitude. The goal of the Mosaic expedition is to better understand these processes and to more accurately forecast how the Arctic is changing. Scientists in sea ice physics, oceanography, atmosphere, biogeochemistry and ecosystem are collaborating to achieve this because what happens at an altitude of 30 kilometers might also influence life at a depth of 700 meters. The center of the expedition is a polar stern, the icebreaker research vessel of the Alfred Wegener Institute. We leave Tromsø in Norway on the 20th September 2019 and travel toward the Siberian coast. I am part of the expedition for the first five weeks, along with another German and two teachers from the United States. We are to travel on the Russian icebreaker Akademik Fyodorov, that is to accompany the Polarstern at the beginning. Today is the 23rd of September 2019. We left two days ago. It's all very exciting, everything is new. We are on deck a lot talking to people. Today we changed time zones and lost an hour, which means a bit less sleep. It's something you notice quickly because you sleep quite well in the cabins. You are being rocked softly through the night. The motion is subtly exhausting. You feel like you need to sleep all the time. Our route leads across the Arctic Ocean. Mosaic is special because of its scale and especially because of its duration. The Polarstern is supposed to take measurements for a year while frozen into the Arctic sea ice. The ship moves along the transpolar drift, which is an across-Arctic drift system forced by ocean currents and wind. Most of the time the engine will be idle. This way the Polarstern and its stock of measuring devices reach regions during the winter month in which no measurements have been taken before. The transpolar drift was already successfully used 130 years ago by Norwegian Fridtjof Nansen during his Fram expedition. He discovered that when frozen into the ice off the Siberian coast, the natural drift system would transport you across the North Pole all the way to Greenland. We've been traveling in the Arctic Ocean for a week now. The thickness of the ice is slowly increasing. Now it's our task to find a suitable ice flow for Polarstern to attach to for the winter. The flow must be at least one and a half kilometers by one and a half kilometers wide and at least seven centimeters thick. To identify suitable flows in the field, we can use two different uh, data sets, two different satellite data sets. One is uh, information that we get from weather satellites, so optical information within the optical range. The other one is from uh, radar satellites. The advantage of radar satellites is that they can penetrate through clouds. And that's a big, big thing, big advantage, because the, in the Arctic, it's, the Arctic is mostly cloud covered. In the meantime, the team settles in on the ship. The day is spent working in the common rooms, on deck or in the laboratory, with four meals a day. We spend very little time in the small cabins. 
I peek over everyone's shoulder, ask many questions and sometimes I can even lend a helping hand. The teams test the instruments that are supposed to be set up on the ice later on. We watch for polar bears from the deck and take notes on how the ice changes. We can also use WhatsApp once a day thanks to the satellite connection. Different flows around us are checked by helicopter. The ice conditions aren't good and the summer of 2019 was extremely warm. It's hard to find a suitable flow. Today is the 1st of October. We are at 85.5 degrees north, only 500 kilometers from the North Pole. There is a 10 by 10 kilometer flow. Is it the right flow for the year-long camp? After 10 days, we find the right mosaic flow. We meet one last time with a polar stand to exchange people and instruments. The Russian icebreaker pumps 600 tons of marine diesel into the polar stand. To sustain the polar stand, there's going to be an exchange like that every two to three months by different new ships. Aircraft will support the supply chain if the ice gets too thick to cross it by ship. The camp of the Polar Stand is erected in a 1.5 km radius around the ship. Different instruments are installed on, in and under the ice. For a year they drift across the Arctic Ocean with the ship. Our part of the expedition is not over yet. The scientists on the Academic Fyodorov built the distributed network of the Polar Stern. For this, the teams install buoys on the flows within a 50 km radius around the polar stern. The scientists usually step onto the ice via the extendable stairs. Only very rarely do they use the mummy chair. Attention is crucial. Only small groups can step onto the ice and walk along the marked pathways. Otherwise, there is always the risk of breaking through. Under the ice, there are 4 to 5 thousand meters of ocean. An experienced polar guide is always present. Here at the Mosaic Expedition, I am working with six other polar guides to ensure the safety of polar researchers. Polar bears are the most impressive animals in the Arctic. Nobody wants to harm them. But for climate research, we have to go into this area and we have to make sure that everything is done safely. And now our goal is that all participants come home healthy and that the polar bears were also healthy and tolerated our visit. Und jetzt müssen wir, ist unsere Zielsetzung, dass alle äh, Teilnehmer gesund nach Hause kommen und dass die Polarbären ebenfalls gesund waren und unseren Besuch toleriert haben. Heavy-duty devices and instruments are placed onto the ice using a crane, picked up with a skido and then brought to their final positions. First they need to drill the holes. Either with the help of a tripod or simply manpower the devices are set down. The snow buoy measures the snow layer and its changes throughout the year. The sled can measure the wind speed, air temperature, solar radiation and reflection and some other parameters. The setup takes several hours. The ITP measures the salinity and water temperature along a cable that reaches hundreds of meters into the water. The device constantly runs up and down the cable. The results can also be interesting for biologists who want to analyze bioactivity. All the data is sent directly via satellites to Germany, the US, Russia, Scandinavia or China. After that, everybody can see the data online and work with it, because there are a lot of questions that we hope to answer. Scientists suspect big natural gas and crude oil reservoirs under the ice. Once the ice recedes far enough, the nations bordering the Arctic will fight for ownership rights. Unlike Antarctica, the Arctic is not protected by a treaty yet. The natural habitat of the polar bear is endangered. But perhaps there might be new inhabitants that will conquer the Arctic due to the new climate. The warming of the Arctic is also melting the Greenland ice sheet. The sea level will rise and coastlines all over the world will recede. 
The Gulf Stream may also be weakened in the same way. While we return back to Norway and share our experiences and results, the Polarstein continues its drift towards Greenland. From here, the Polarstein will detach in summer and return to Bremerhaven. But the scientists' work still won't be over. The scientists plan to evaluate and work on the data over the next decades. Hopefully, we'll find more answers about the future of this region, which is so worthy of protection.